I am talking with Anthea West, who is a comic creator. Um, she's appeared in the Switchboard a few times as random characters on the radio. And I reviewed her comic Sleep Tight last year. Today we're going to be talking about her webcomic Fate. Uh, and thank you, Anthea, for coming on and doing an interview. Okay, so... Thanks uh, very much for having me. <laughs> Obviously, Fate is a comic, but uh, what kind of story is it? Um, hmm. I, think I feel that making a synopsis of my story is always the hardest thing to do. <laughs> I... Mainly because it's just, just, trying to, just trying to put what I feel feel in words and then making those words entertaining yeah and enticing so many things to do um hmm, okay so fate well it's a it's a fantasy all ages story anyway and it's pretty much kind of like my love note to um you know uh, comedy world building and really unassuming main characters mm. Uh, yeah. The the world building is something that really stood out to me about fate. Um, the cultures and beliefs of the world. There isn't much shown about them, but from what we see, they seem very well thought out. Um, do you have any kind of specific process for world building? Um. Well, I kind of just kind of go. With what I've done with so far with. Uh, some of my other stories, I tend to just kind of pick a a theme or a culture to kind of build around. Mm -hmm. And when it's when I'm building up around a culture, I try obviously I try to stay like very respectful and stuff like that and study into it. Um, so I, I like to like build up on something that's real and then kind of play and manipulate it into something that's new. Yeah. So with Fate, uh, the world is kind of based in um, India and in the those Asian regions. Mm. So, uh, so, Southeast uh, Asia. Yeah, yes, yeah, Southeast Asia. Um, so I'm kind of there's a lot of kind of aesthetic uh, looks and feels from that region mm -hmm. in the story. And I kind of just built up, because those are my, my aesthetic base, and then I just kind of think of, okay, so how does this world start, what are, what, like, I find, like, the easiest to, to build up a world is to think, what do the people believe? Mm. And then, through those beliefs, they kind of build a world around them to reflect those beliefs. Or things that people just don't know about. So, um, in Fate, in the land of uh, Tisu, uh there's a main goddess called Odia, and she's a. There's a lot of um, listening, hearing, uh, birds, music. I found the, the birds the very, very interesting. The the messengers for Odia. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the world, the magic in that world was given to them by the sky goddess Odia. So the magic kind of focuses around on uh, hearing and mm. being able to speak and sing um, and sing and at certain pitches and stuff to command the magic. It's like you don't control the magic, you just kind of ask it what to do. And maybe if you're lucky, it'll do it for you. That seems so, to relate very much to Dee's name, because she describes it as being the same as the music note. Yeah, it's, it's exactly it. Uh, there's a lot of, um, kind of like, it's kind of like a musical, but lazier. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're not going to get people, like, jumping out into full song with a whole orchestra going on, but be singing randomly to other people about what you're doing, how you're feeling, is fairly commonplace. Yeah. Um, 
so in the comic D, she's named after her parent. Uh, is this a spoiler? No, no, it's not. A you you get to decide uh, what the spoilers are. Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. She's named after a specific person's favorite musical note, which was the the, the note D, mm. so or Do, but they're called a D here. So she's named after that, and um, there's like, uh, like when she's saying that, she does actually sing the note as well. This is what I'm named after. Okay. The note. Yeah. And people will often, like, say you have a crush on someone, mm. and you, it's like you don't write a love letter. You go to that person and you make up a bloody ditty. <laughs> you know? And then that's just that, but that's like normal. That's like yeah. giving someone flowers. So, like, uh, uh the, the cultural thing. Uh, and then uh, that's how the, the magic works mm. in that world as well. Because um, Dessou is coming from a time, Dessou is kind of in a time of recovery yes. and healing. Because thousands of years ago, there was a big old. The um, Black Sands. Semi apocalypse? Yes, the Black Sands. The birth of Black Sands was a kind of semi apocalyptic event in their world. And before that time, we had like huge technologies. And magic was just everywhere. Uh, but the main thing was that magic was so ingrained in the world and had been. Uh, they had come up with a method to make magic easy to put into objects. Mm. So that made magic um, not acceptable. Um, it made it easier for just normal, non magical people to use magical items, mm. which is very similar to how, you know, back in the day. Uh, you know, reading wasn't accessible. Yeah. And then we had the printing press, which made reading completely accessible. Well, not completely, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and that's really kind of ordered uh, the culture and history. Social progress. We're learning stuff. Yeah, there was a big social process. And that happened the same in this world. Mm. Magic was available to everyone. So more people could, you know, discover new things and find new ways of healing and new learning, even if they weren't sorcerers or wizards. That actually... And... Go on. Sorry, yeah, that actually brings me to another point on um, Bunny. Uh, Bunny is the main character. Um, he is, yeah. And he's, he's a dust so bunny. He, he, shares the, he, spares, he shares the spotlight with uh, D. I, but I describe him as kind of like the catalyst of the story. He's yeah. the one that brings the change. It, it feels... But sorry, go on. It feels that the moment that Bunny is like the point of view character but D is the protagonist but uh, my question is uh, Bunny is a, a dust bunny but they all seem to not really be able to read yet you said they have a connection with magic anyway so how exactly does that work or is that a spoiler um, I'm gonna be honest half of your question I did did not get. Oh. So you're gonna have to repeat yourself, sorry. Sorry. Um Bunny is a dust bunny and they can't read mostly. No, oh, they can't read at all. No, they're dumb as bricks. But the uh it, it the comic still says that they have a connection with magic, so if the magic how how does that work? How do they have that connection? Well, well magic is a natural thing. Mm. It's a, it's a living thing that's everywhere. Mm. Um, a thousand years ago, it was everywhere times a million. Like, it was... You could feel it, you could hear it. Magic was everywhere. At the time that Tissue is based in now, uh, magic is much, much, much weaker. Yeah. And in, there's even blind spots kind of all around the country and all around the world that there is just no magic. And this happened after the birth of Black Sands. But you're asking about the dust ponies. Um, in Fate, there is two uh, races. Yeah, mm. two races. There's humans and then there's the Fae. Yeah. And 
yeah, the Fae came from a different place altogether. But after the birth of Black Sands, a whole bunch of them were left in uh, the human world, Ithana. Ithana's the world to seize the continent that they're on. Sorry, I'll just clarify yep, that. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah. And Fae people live on magic. And the higher the fae you are, the more connected to magic that you are. So there's like low level fae and then there's higher level fae. Mm. High level fae cannot live without magic. They yeah. will literally die because they don't reproduce and they don't even eat or drink mm. or anything. Magic is just what keeps them going. And after the birth of Black Sands, they either had to flee or completely change their chemical makeup or just die. Yeah. And so the phase that we have currently in the zoo are either low level or mediumish sort of phase. Dust bunnies are a very low beast based phase. Okay. So they have that they so they all have a natural connection to magic. Mm. They they can feel magic and they can just kinda attune to it easy enough. There's a lot of different they will just have natural magical type abilities and dust bunnies are original fae creature mm. so they have that connection to magic so it's mostly you'll you know it's mostly that they can change the color of their fur yeah which is an indicator of if they're with another dust bunny or even a person or a different animal whom they see as their one other special person that they can never be without so that doesn't have to be a mate that could be a sibling or just a best friend or even an owner or even a child just personal that, connection yeah the hu- a really deep personal connection and those two or three or five or whatever just bunnies will change their colouring to reflect uh, contrast colour with the other ones yeah. to show that connection so that's mainly where their their kind of magical based ability is coming from. Mm-hmm. They also have kind of longish lives as well. So a dust a normal dust bunny could live to maybe 80, 100 years. Mm. So that's like that's a normal dust bunny lifespan. Uh, humans don't have that natural connection. Mm. So they just age normally, and if they want to use magic, they have to learn how to use magic and they can become wizards or maybe just have an inept to do this one spell. Yeah. Like, look, I can I can make my finger pink. <laughs> That's my one spell. <laughs> That's my one spell. Uh, there are people mm. who are sorcerers, mm. and they're kind of weird. They're not quite a hybrid. They're a type of people, they're humans who are able to not only, like, talk to magic, Mm. See, wizards can talk to magic. Yeah. That's how they are able to use magic. Wizards can hear magic as well as talk to magic. Okay. So they're so they can hear where the magic is and they can hear where it's strongest. Mm. And because of this extra connection to magic, wizards uh, not wizards. Sorcerers. sorcerers tend to live a very long age, even actually longer than most low level phase. Okay. Because they have a deeper they have a closer connection to hmm. uh magic uh, we were saying bunny i hope that oh yeah what about bunny? yeah we were saying bunny is unusual because he's able to read uh can you tell us more about bunny and what marks him out as different from the other dust bunnies hmm. okay after this is this is a dangerous le- this is dangerous ground <laughs> uh, i say the to be honest, the fact that Bunny can speak and read is not actually the biggest difference between him mm. and normal Dust Bunnies. Probably the biggest difference between him and normal Dust Bunnies is that he doesn't want to make outer connections. Mm. Um, there is a reason for that, and it will be found out, obviously, <laughs> but it's like, it's like the most important event that happened in Bunny's life. Yeah that made him this way to be such an absolute gobshite of a loner. Uh, Bunny does seem yeah. much more solitary than the others. He's very he's very solitary and 
he's a coward as well. He's mm. a big coward. And that's not just in a normal sense of, oh, that thing is going to kill me, better run away. It's also he's he's a social coward and he's also terrified of going out of his, you know, safety bubble, his personal bubble. <laughs> uh, which, well, too bad for him, obviously. <laughs> uh, like, that's probably the biggest difference between him and other dust bunnies. Because mm. other dust bunnies are hugely, they're hugely social creatures yeah. by nature. Um, they want to make connections. They go up to complete strangers and just want to be friends with them. Mm. Which is kind of sad because some countries eat them. Oh. But you seem to establish that very well in the comic, even just visually. And in a very short amount of time that the other dust bunnies that, as a species, they tend to be quite social. Uh, yeah. It's because it's... Because I'm really... It's really just trying to dig in the point that Bunny is an anomaly. Mm. Not just because he can speak and he can read. Yeah. And there is a reason behind that, which, mm. again, we will find out. But I'm not mm. going to tell you because... <laughs> S speaking of anomalies, uh, D seems to be very much of an anomaly. An anomaly. <laughs> uh, she is, yes. Um, um, yeah, well, with D, uh, there are, like, half demons have happened before, mm. but they're exceptionally rare. Yeah. Um, exceptionally rare, because uh, demons, as we learned in Chapter 2, who kind of just live in the black sands they're not they're not sentient they're like just beasts mm. and they don't seem to have any interests beyond just roaming these sands and killing anything on sight they can't even seem to just leave the sands they just seem to just hang around there all the time okay. so it's not even oh you know mean horrible creatures going off to villages and having their way with things mm. it's more they don't seem to even be able yeah to procreate so to have half demons is really really odd it's like mm. like how how did you even happen um the she's uh well obviously just just with her being alive is anomaly on itself but a lot of people in Tissue who come across her would be like, Whoa, well, hey, you're just kind of talking. Like, <laughs> having feelings and emotions. What's up with that? And she'd be like, Because, yeah, yeah, I do that. Because <laughs> she doesn't understand. So, like, mm. she, what, she grew up just with her grandmother mm. on this little farm in this little wasteland of an island. Yeah. And she just wasn't told anything and we do we will learn more about that in the next few chapters but basically her grandmother just didn't want her to know because she's scared of how much that would hurt her trying to protect um, her yeah pretty much trying to protect mm. her i don't want people to think i think i've had a few i've had a few people with theories that d's grandmother was evil or mm. abused her or tried to sell her I'm just saying right now, that is not the case yeah, at all. I, I'm not sure how they'd have gotten that, because it seems very plain that D would have been unusual. Like, there's people currently trying to sell her. Yes. Um, yeah, no, D, D's grandmother loved her a lot. Mm. Like, and... I... But this... No, this is not... No, do you know what? It's not a spoiler. <laughs> uh, they're not actually related. Okay. Me and her grandmother. Yeah. She she's related by family only. And yeah. And her grandmother knew her mother. Mm. Like very intently, like she would have practically had raised Dee's mother. Mm. But they were not raised at all. Okay. Um yeah. Fate Um uh, Fate's a Say that again? Uh, Fate's a webcomic, but you've also published um, comics in print like Sleep Tight and The Earthbound God. Um, what led you to make the decision to do Fate as an online comic? Uh, 
Um, well, yeah, well, fate was going to be an issue thing first off. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to try and bring an issue like every few months and stuff. But like after a while, I kind of realized um, one, that's it's expensive. Mm-hmm. It's expensive. Two, I'm limiting my limiting myself to a wider audience. Yeah. Because. With the with just selling it as issues, I can only get as far as I can send them. Yeah. Which is mainly in Ireland or maybe in England. Mm. And I sell them at like conventions or sell them in bookstores, but that's as far as I can go. By making it a web comic, I'm not only saving myself a few pennies. I'm also more likely to read a much wider audience. Mm with less effort. And a, a more diverse audience as well, people from all kinds of yeah. national backgrounds. Oh yeah, all over the world. Um, like, I think, I think my main audience at the moment is American and Irish. Mm. But that wouldn't surprise me too much because uh, you find that a lot of the mainstream kind of web comics online all tend to be run uh, by Americans. Like maybe, maybe I'm just being mm. ignorant here. I, I, so I feel like I find that's the way for Irish creators in general. My own audience is mostly American and Irish. Mm. Sure, Americans love us. <laughs> <laughs> right, so um. So uh, yeah, that was that was actually just the main, like to be honest. Uh, the plan had always been that Faith would eventually be a web comic, mm. but I was going to wait until a certain chapter. That makes sense. As a web comic. But I decided just to do it much earlier mm. because why not? Is, have you found that there's any difference in writing for a web comic and writing for a print comic? Uh, web comics, in generally, tend to be much longer mm. and tend to like, like tend to like spread out mm. over much more years, uh, like. Um, like my first graphic novel, that took me about nine months, nine, ten months to make. So I had written it, thumbnailed it, and then did it, and it went out. Mm. With Fate, Fate is a much longer story, and it's also going to be spread out for a much longer period of time. So uh, for me, like when I started Fate, I had done an outline of the entire story, so I know the exact building blocks of my story and where it's headed so I don't end up in a corner not knowing where I'm supposed to go next. Yeah. But I'm finding that like as the years come I'm growing not only in artistic skill but also in writing skill. Mm. I'm also getting more better acquainted with the characters and their dialogues and having a better idea of uh, character arcs and such. And also uh, the real world building as well. Like, yeah. I learn something new and think actually that will really work here. So with web comics, for me anyway, I feel um, I can work on the writing and development of the story as I'm doing the story. Mm. Well, I wouldn't do that with some, with like a graphic novel or um, an issue anthology or something. That would be it's all written. This is what I'm doing. Mm. Do it. It's out. Well, with fate was. This is what I'm doing. Do it. Oh, I can. Ch- I think I can, I'm going to add this in later, mm. or I'm going to actually change this later um, when we get to this point. Cause, like basically, I have more time to change things. It's kind of like um, you ever see, you know, in the Wallace and Gromit movie, <laughs> uh, with the penguin. Yes. And the bit where he's on the train mm. and he has to make the train tracks as the train's going. <laughs> yeah. That's web comics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It sounds like it gives you much more room to breathe as a storyteller. It does. It, does. it gives me, like, it's both a blessing and a curse. Yeah. Because um, you could end up reach, reaching to a point and making yourself in a corner or realizing, oh, if I've only had thought of this, I've only thought of this now. I should have like implied this much much earlier on it would mm. be much better but it also allows me to like see something that just doesn't work in the story and have be able to change it yeah 
Um, in chapter three, actually, the current chapter that Fate is on at the moment, um, there's a certain part, uh, it's about halfway through the chapter, where Dee is stuck in the brig and yeah. a mermaid is coming in after her. Mm. Yeah. Um, and she's stuck down there and Bunny's being a cowardly little shit on the top. <laughs> what I had originally, what I originally written was that it stuck to, it stuck with Bunny during this whole thing. Yeah. Where he, he's hearing her, hear her calling for him and everything and he doesn't know what to do and it stayed with him that entire time. Yeah. While, because like when I first written that, I had, so I was thinking of Dee more as a secondary character mm. rather than as also a main character, yeah. like Bunny. While as obviously as I've been going, I realize actually no, they're both very much the main character, mm -hmm. and having this really scary, tired, terrifying moment happening to Dee, but not focusing on her or seeing it through her perspective was just really bad writing, I felt. So I I changed it. So you see Mermaid go down, yeah. she's going ah, but then it changes to Dee's perspective where she's dealing with it. Yeah. And then when I want it to be Bunny's perspective, I changed I changed it back as well. But it's going back and forth rather than just just showing one Bunny's perspective. Yeah. Cool. Because um... what's happening is just as important to D as it is to Bunny, so I should be showing both their perspectives yep. rather than just Bunny's. Both characters and have equal importance, so both their reactions are equally yeah. as important. Exactly. So, I was able to change that. Mm. Um, actually, I changed that like as I was starting the <laughs> chapter. So, <laughs> um, there you go. That's a, that's a kind of a somewhat advantage to webcomics. There's also... I say a big disadvantage to webcomics though is yep. that uh, like a lot of um, like beginners fall into is that they're constantly going back and changing things and constantly going back mm. and fixing things or rewriting or rebooting their story constantly and never finishing yeah. anything. Yeah, so perhaps it's a little too much freedom. Yeah, sometimes it can be a little much freedom. I say if you're if you're a content creator, uh, in, if you're an independent content creator, I say the best skill you can learn to do is finishing. Mm. And you can only do that by letting yourself finish something and not constantly going back to fix something. L learn to commit. Which is, yes, which is a bit hypocritical of me because <laughs> I did end up redoing chapter two. <laughs> But, 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 I do know how to finish things. I have made and finished things yeah. in the past. Well, so, yes, I've read them. So They're I, on my bookshelf. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I do have the skill to finish things, but when I had originally done Chapter 2, mm. um, it was in like a span of less than a month, and I was trying to get it done for, uh, finished for Dublin Comic Con. Yeah. So a lot of it was rushed, and... If it was just kind of bad art-wise, I probably would have left it. Mm. But there was a lot of really bad writing and a lot of really bad dialogue going on yeah. that I just hated. <laughs> and for me, chapter two is a really important chapter because obviously um, it's the chapter that introduces Dee to yeah, the story. Yeah, no, you, you want Bunny's that to be good. relationship is super important. Mm. Like, it's literally the whole basis of the story is their relationship and how it develops and if that first time is written really badly yeah. and just not good like because you, you didn't really feel a proper rapport between the two mm. I felt so I just it's like I, I just had to change yeah in, in the, the uh, in the current version of chapter 2 you really can feel them playing off each other really well and bouncing off each yeah. other really well so I think that was probably yeah, a good they're, revision. There are characters who are the exact opposite, so mm. there's a lot of bouncing and there's a lot of contrast yeah. between the two. All right, um, I think we can wrap it up there, but where, can you tell the listeners, I suppose, where people can find out more about your work and where they can read Fate? Um, 
Well, I have my my main my main website is justfunnystudios.com. Um, Fate, you can actually read on a good few different websites, but my main websites are Tapastics and uh, Comic Fury. So on the Comic Fury side, it's fate.thecomicseries.com. I know it's a long URL, but <laughs> I don't have a. It's that's what you get for hosting sites, you know. And then Tapastics. It's just tapastics forward slash d fate dot com or something like that. But you can find the links all on my main website, which are which again is just bunnies slash uh, dash studios dot com. Cool, and I will be putting all of those links in the description of this video as well. Woo! Hey, they saved me, saved me all the work. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Anthea, for coming on and talking to me about your webcomic fate. Thank you so much for uh, listening to me prattle on and trying to speak English. <laughs> all right. Okay. So that's that interview. We'll be doing another one at some point. Um, if you enjoyed the interview, please hit like. Remember, your applause is the only way to counteract my daily chant of I don't believe in fairies.